MLMs in general have a very bad reputation, not just in Canada, but in the United States and all over the world. And specifically, insurance MLMs get a very bad reputation for a number of different things, poor sales, improperly trained agents, lack of service, lack of review, lack of oversight, all of these different things that we as insurance brokers in the industry have known for a very long time. We very frequently come across clients who've worked with insurance MLMs such as World Financial Group or Experia Financial or Great Way Financial, one of these companies, or other insurance MLMs. We've known that as insurance brokers for a long time. However, it's very nice to see that the regulatory authorities are starting to take notice as well. And one of them specifically, which is the Financial Regulatory Authority of Ontario, the FSRA, which is essentially the government body that regulates insurance advisors in Ontario, took notice of some of these improper selling techniques and a bunch of other things that these insurance MLMs are doing wrong. And they did a large thematic review of those three specific insurance companies, or I should say insurance MLMs, and they released it and they're starting to follow up with them and things are starting to happen. And so in this video, we're going to go over this review that they did of those three insurance carriers, or pardon me, those three insurance MLMs, they're not carriers at all. Um, we're going to go through this. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly you know, what they're being investigated for, what the problem is, and hopefully what the outcome will be as well. What is up, guys? For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Philip Setter. I'm the founder and CEO of Finney Life, where we've helped hundreds of Canadians find the right life insurance coverage at the right price, all from the comfort of their own home. If that sounds interesting, I'll put a link in the description below and you can check it out. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so here's the thing. This video is not going to be this huge anti MLM video, anti multi level marketing video. However, I do want to touch on it a little bit because there are some things that you need to know. So MLM, which stands for multi level marketing, is a type of business style where you have, you know, this one or a few people at the top and then they recruit a bunch of people and then those people are meant to recruit a bunch of people. And that is how they bring business into their company and to their advisors. Now, the problem with this type of business model, in my opinion, is that it incentivizes recruiting over actual selling and education of the advisors. Now, this is specific to insurance MLM. So the problem is, is their entire business is built on the premise that they need to be recruiting. The way that they teach the people that join this company to make it and to you know rise above the ranks and get rich is to recruit, is to bring in other people. But what are you doing when you're a recruit? You have no experience in whatever it is you're doing. You have no experience in the industry. You have no experience working with the clients. You have no real education on how these things work. And now you're just trying to recruit people that also have no experience, who are gonna recruit people who also have no experience and aren't getting properly educated. And so what I find this does, and you can quite evidently see it from this review that we're going to get into is you have this massive system of tons of recruits and uplines and downlines and all these other people and nobody is really taking responsibility for what they're doing and none of the education is really being properly disseminated between these people and between all the advisors. So the proper care for clients is, is being taken. And so what I find more often than not is that even though there may be some good apples in some of these MLMs, and what I mean by that is, you know, World Financial Group, Experia Financial, Great Way Financial, maybe there's someone that you worked with who actually was a really good individual. They knew what they were talking about. They understood the products. They made good recommendations. They didn't try and sell you overly complicated products or something where they'd make a higher commission. But this is the exception. This is not the rule. The entire foundation and system and premise of an MLM company, it's built to deceive and rip off customers, even though there may be some good apples in the company. Unfortunately, that's the exception and not the rule. And so what I find is most MLMs, especially the ones in the insurance industry that kind of hide behind this pretense of helping families because they sell financial products. What I find most of them are not a good idea. It's not a good idea to work with any of them. Most of them are doing really bad sales practices, selling improper products, not getting the type of education they need. They're not focused on the proper things. They're not having a duty of care to their clients. And so more often than not, I recommend people just 
stay away from them altogether. But with that being said, we are going to get into the review of what the Federal Regulatory Authority of Ontario did on these three companies that I mentioned. I'm going to be reading off this page here a little bit. And by the way, I will also link this in the description of this video and you can check it out. But here's essentially what they found. And this is the executive summary. So in summary, basically, this is what they found. All three MGAs, quote unquote, they use MGAs uh, as a term to describe these companies, but they're not true MGAs. MGA stands for managing general agencies, but specifically World Financial Group, Great Way Financial and Experia Financial are the three companies they're talking about. All three of them use a tiered recruitment business model, and they're growing rapidly by recruiting individuals who are not yet licensed. So they're just bringing whoever into the business. You meet them at a coffee shop, you meet them at a grocery store, you meet them at the gas station, and hey, that could be a recruit. Let's bring them into the business. So, you know, these aren't people who are in the insurance industry and have your best interest in mind. They're just coming in and they're drinking the Kool-Aid from whatever company they go. So agents are paid for insurance sales they make, but often they're also paid for sales made by other agents in the same network that are subordinate to the aforementioned agent. So, you know, the pyramid scheme. So if you're, you know, at the top, you make sales on people below you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Agents are paid commission based on their tier or level. Agents can rise to a new tier when they sell more, recruit more, and or the people they directly or indirectly recruit do the same. So essentially what they're saying is that you have a very low commission level at the beginning, and then as you recruit more and more people, you can rise the ranks and get a higher commission level. So all MGAs had a high proportion of newly sponsored agents with with less part of me than two years of experience as licensed agent. So what am I saying? Most people, like I said, getting in have no experience in the financial industry. They have no experience in the insurance industry. These are brand new agents that are coming in, getting trained by also brand new agents who haven't been in the industry for you know any amount of time where they can actually amass any amount of knowledge in this industry and give proper care to their clients. So you know it's it's very it's built. You see what I'm saying? It's like a giant uh, house built of cards that could fall down at any minute. So one MGA had minimal screening for recruits, mainly collecting personal and work eligibility information. So that's the first problem right there, is it's this tiered recruitment model, that's that MLM model, they'll take anyone, if you have a heartbeat and a pulse, and you know a bank account and you'll pay them then come on in we'll take you we'll take you into the company so these mg this is the next one here number point number two uh the mgas with many newly licensed agents are selling relatively complex products these mlms love to sell two different things really number one universal life insurance which is a type of permanent life insurance which is an incredibly complicated product if you follow my channel for any amount of time you'll know that i'm an advocate against ul there's a lot of strings attached to it there's a lot of complexities i have many different videos on my channel about universal life insurance and the second one is just permanent life insurance in general as an investment because i always say the need for life insurance is if your loved if you passed away pardon me would your loved ones be financially impacted if the answer to that is yes you probably need life insurance well how do you sell life insurance to someone who doesn't have a family doesn't have children doesn't have a spouse doesn't have aging parents that rely on them maybe they're just young that is where permanent life insurance is often sold and positioned as a quote-unquote investment because not everybody needs life insurance but everybody needs investments and maybe you can use life insurance as an investment again i don't think this is right for the majority of people for the minority of the high income earners and business owners, this could be a good idea. It's a very complex strategy. A lot of things can go wrong. And I don't think it's suitable for a vast majority or for the vast majority of people. However, you know, how do you answer that question? How do you sell life insurance to someone who doesn't need life insurance? This is how. And so this is what they're doing at these companies. A large proportion of the life and health insurance gross income at most MGAs came from sales of permanent life insurance products, mostly universal life insurance. So this is an investigation that's done by the Federal Regulatory Authority of Ontario, where they looked at all the sales and all the documents and everything that's happening. Everything that I say on this channel, they found out clear as day within the documents. They're saying, look, they're selling these really complex products. And these are new agents that have been in the industry for less than two years. I've been in the industry for almost 10 years. And I would still be incredibly apprehensive before I would sell this type of product to a client because it's so complicated. So yeah, I mean, you can tell I get a little fired up about this, obviously. So um, 
Most of life insurance gross income came from a few particular insurers. Okay, yeah, no, that's no problem. Listen to this. One MGA's large proportion of sales were made through a strategy called Insured Retirement Plan, IRP. All this means is it's a strategy, quote unquote, where you use, pardon me, life insurance as a retirement asset, meaning that you're gonna borrow from it during retirement and they use it as an investment. Like I said, how do you sell life insurance to someone who doesn't need life insurance? Through the IRP, consumers are recommended to put more money into a UL policy than the insurance cost to save slash and or invest within the contract. Um, gross income, yeah, came from a single share. So that's point number two. Point number three is with agent training and monitoring. So several agent related duties are delegated to the insurers, um, to the MJs. However, there's minimal reporting of completion of those functions by the MJs to the insurers. So what are they saying? They're saying that they're delegating a lot of these responsibilities of training and oversight and making sure their agents are doing the right thing. They're saying, oh, we're not going to do this as World Financial Group or Experior or Great Way Financial. That's the carrier's responsibility. So if you want your products correctly sold, Equitable or RBC or Avari or any of these other companies, you have to go tell them. So it's kind of like, Hey, I thought you were training them. No, I thought you were training them. Oh, nobody's training them? Oopsie daisies. That's basically what's happening here is everyone's passing the blame along. The insurance companies are like, hey, we're making, we're getting paid, we're making products. The MGA, such as as the insurance MLM, such as, you know, World Financial Group, these guys are like, hey, we're making money, we're doing things. Um, the agents, you know, they're making a small amount of money, obviously not as much as the upline, but what's happening at the end of the day is who's who's carrying the bag who's missing out it's the clients it's you it's the consumer at the end of the day you're the one holding the bag carrying these improperly placed products paying the premium paying for something that you shouldn't be paying for and at the end of the day it's whose fault is it oh it's not mine it's not mine it's not mine nobody wants to take the blame everyone wants to pass it on to the next guy because everybody's making money here except for you the consumer you're losing it and so this is one of the biggest problems that they found here so no mandatory training materials may be consistent with regulatory operations and or fair treatment of customers no risk assessment was performed by the mga to select agents for proactive reviews no formal proactive agent reviews were conducted by the mgas what are they saying they're saying it's just the wild west they're saying that nobody cares the mgas the the companies i'm going to stop calling them mgas because they're not mgas they're saying WFG, Xperior, Great Way Financial, they're all making money and they don't care. The carriers, Avari, Equitable, all these ones, they're selling the products and they don't care. They're all passing the blame around. No one's doing any form of review. These guys have been running around like the Wild West for the past 10, 20, 30 years selling shitty products to consumers that have been losing their money. And I have many stories of clients that I've worked with that have lost 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 buying crappy products from these agents that have been in the industry for less than two years and have no idea what they're selling. And nobody is passing the blame. Nobody wants to take accountability. That is what this report is going into. So essentially the four main areas that they went through in this review is the rapid growth, the, the unsustainable rapid growth and lack of oversight. So that's the first one, rapid growth, sale of complex products by new agent. That's a big one. Concerns with agent training. They're doing no training for these agents at all and lack of agent oversight. I'm not going to go over the entire review. I did want to do the executive summary there and the, the detailed observations. I will link this in the description of this video, um, but you can see this is a very large problem. I think it's, you know, like 20 pages or something like that. This is obviously a huge problem in the industry. You can see that this is definitely something that needs to be addressed. It's something that's been on the docket for a long time. And finally, the regulatory authority is saying, no, we're putting our foot down. We're going to do something about it. So this is specific to Ontario, by the way. It's not Canada wide. However, precedent has now been set. And this was done in Ontario, 2020, or pardon me, uh, October of 2022 in Ontario. And now we're starting to see they just gave an ultimatum to World Financial Group. They said, listen, we need to see the entire re-review. We want you to rewrite your entire program. What's going to come of this? I'm still not 100% certain, but the spotlight is now on these MLMs to do a better job. So with that all being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions, comments, just drop them below. And if you guys are enjoying this content, all I ask is you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.